you made it to part three. I like that. Shalom once again family. I am super excited that you made it to the end of this series, Red in Hebrew. Um, if you haven't seen the other two videos, I would recommend uh, going ahead and watching those. If you're trying to understand something, it's best to gain knowledge of the perimeter of the subject to help aid in the conclusion and the answer to your question. With that being said, if you are ready for part three, I'm Noble Afro, your Israelite brother and president of All Praises Apparel, giving all praises to the Most High Yah. And I think you're gonna like this one. Today, we are covering our fourth and final word for red, Admoni. In part two, we covered the biblical origin of Esau by reading Genesis 25, verses 21 through 34. Please take no shame in pausing this video for a second to grab your 1611 King James Bible and read and refresh your memory. Today, we are going to focus on verse 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Let's zoom in on that word red. Red was translated from the Hebrew word admoni and was also translated into the word ruddy. We'll get back to that one in a second though. Let's check out Strong's definition of admoni in the Blue Letter Bible lexicon. Now the biblical usage says that it was applied to Esau. And if you look in the Strong section, there was a mention of another very important person that admoni was applied to as well, King David. Looking at this definition, we can see that admoni is an adjective that describes a red or red-haired person. Now, when I first learned about this, I know I wasn't the only one that was taught that this description of Esau looked more like a redneck ginger. Accepting this as fact was very easy to do since I had just won the battle over my Stockholm Syndrome. But the Most High directed me towards other brothers' videos and various research content in various books and website articles and I was humbled. <laughs> my hatred caused me to abandon my common sense. All right, I assumed that the term redskin could only be applied to sunburned white people, completely disregarding the fact that our Native American brothers and sisters are called redskins by the same people I was actually trying to apply this term to. So it got me thinking, was there ever a time in history where black people have referred to themselves or others as red? And the answer is yes there is. And we still do it to this day. Now I'm not even gonna talk about the copper tribes and all of that, I'm actually gonna try to keep this fairly recent. All right, from your grandparents' time till now. Now, our first red person was a pioneer in comedy. Drum roll, please. Red Fox. Oh, my bad. <clears throat> red Fox. John Elroy Sanford was his real name, and you probably recognize him from the infamous 1970s sitcom Sanford and Son. Where did Red get his name from? Let's go to his website and see what's up. And behold, in the second paragraph of his biography, we find our answer. John Elroy Sanford was born into poverty in St. Louis on December 9th, 1922. With a ruddy complexion, I hate repeat offending, repeat offending, but let me just go ahead and say that one more time. <clears throat> With a ruddy complexion, a ruddy complexion, ruddy, a ruddy, ruddy complexion, ruddy, a ruddy, 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 ruddy. ruddy. 
Red fast became a nickname. He derived Fox from the admirable Major League Baseball player Jimmy Fox. Wow. Let me also point out that uh, Red Fox had red spots and red tones in his hair, which over time went into a very light color and faded into a gray in his old age. In conclusion, Red Fox was called Red because of his skin and his hair. Make note of that. Our second famous Red person is actually my favorite civil rights activist, Malcolm X. Now, if you wanted to, you could find more detailed information in his autobiography, but Malcolm X was also known as Red, Big Red, and Detroit Red. What they call you? Red. Red, and I ain't no punk. You better not be. On this website, Black History Now, you can verify that he was nicknamed Red because of his natural reddish hair color. Are you ready for this cool note? Malcolm X and Red Fox met each other when they were just young men trying to get by working in a restaurant. Malcolm X called Red Fox the funniest dishwasher on this earth. Man, can you guys imagine all the jokes that was said? Especially during that time? Oh my gosh, I wish I was there to hear that. Let's read from biography.com to learn a little bit more. Struggling to get by, Fox worked a number of jobs. He spent some time in New York City, Harlem neighborhood. During this time, he met Malcolm X, then known as Malcolm Little. Malcolm called Fox the funniest dishwasher on this earth, according to Fox's official website. The pair became friends and shared a similar ruddy complex. Malcolm was called as Detroit Red and Fox was Chicago Red by their co-workers in the restaurant where they worked. Malcolm X and Red Fox both had red skin and reddish hair. Keep in mind back then they wasn't working with no white people, all right? <laughs> these are Israelites dishing out these nicknames to them. Now, before we get to our last famous red person, I would like to point out that a lot of our Israelite brothers and sisters still refer to uh, light-skinned uh, Israelites as red, okay? Um, <laughs> Wow, I can't believe I'm even saying this. Have you ever heard of the term red bone? Shut up, yeah you have. You can find this term in a lot of rap songs, but I'm not gonna play any of them for you right now. <laughs> um, we shouldn't be calling our women uh, red bones. But let's go over to Urban Dictionary. Yes, you heard me correctly. I'm using this as a source. Uh, let's go over to Urban Dictionary and um, see the definition of this slang. Redbone. The correct terminology is a black person who has red undertones in their hair and skin. Usually light or car light caramel, but not always. Oh my gosh. They just have reddish hair and skin. They go on to say that now we just call any light skin person a red bone. But originally it's if you had red skin and red hair. Now, what does Webster's Dictionary say a red bone is? Any of a breed of agile, speedy coon hounds of US origin having a usually solid dark red coat. Do I need to say anything else, all right? Function fam, connect the dots, all right? We shouldn't be calling our people that. We shouldn't. On to the last and final, Red Man. No, not you, dude. He's actually one of the greatest boxers of all time. Yes, you've probably guessed it, Muhammad Ali. Now, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I do know that Muhammad Ali never had the nickname Red, 
but he was ruddy indeed. Why did I bring him up, you ask? Take a look at 1 Samuel 17, 42 with me, all right? This occurred when David was in his youth and he first confronted Goliath. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. And then Goliath started bumping them gums and we all know what happened next. Now, the Philistines are a Hermetic people, um, which would have made Goliath dark skin. King David's appearance was offensive to Goliath, but do we ever stop to think about why? First, David was just a young boy or a young man challenging a seasoned warrior with countless victories. Now, I watch a lot of action movies, okay? So if you watch a lot of action movies too, you will have the understanding that there is no honor amongst killing children, all right? No women, no kids, right? But what's up with these other two descriptions? Ruddy and fair countenance. As I mentioned earlier, Admoni was also translated to ruddy. Throughout this video series, we have learned that a ruddy individual is a person with red undertones in their skin and hair. The question is, why would that excite Goliath and why would that provoke him? Being a ruddy man myself with the nickname Red when I was younger, uh, I understand what the assumption is every single time that I get into a fight. And if you are a part of the black community or grew up in a black community, you will agree with this assumption as well. Probably already even know it. That ruddy and light-skinned people can't fight. We're soft. We're the house niggas. Willie Lynch unfortunately did a great job pinning the young and old slaves against each other and the light-skinned slaves against the dark-skinned slaves. But we see that even in the Old Testament, this stigma was still alive. For those of you who may think that I'm making this up and cannot relate, please enjoy these next few clips. Cause you born with some lighter faces? Why? Cause it's closer to white You fuckin' stupid if you think that make you closer to right People feel safe around you cause you fuckers can't fight Just sell out tonight If it'll help you win off, believe it or not I'd rather be darker anyway Cause people look at y'all and soft and they'll try you any day Black is beautiful, right? And you the only motherfuckers think that we can't fight I bet I beat your ass if I go and turn off the lights See, you don't touch just that Labeled as a pretty boy and that you can't fight back And people always pointing out that you This is what I think about the whole Barack Obama thing. I was under no. And illusions. keep in mind, keep shut uh, the uh, fuck uh, up. Uh, uh, Ooh, you see that uh, uh, half red bone light skinned nigga? Hey, that a motherfucker dark. put hands on you, nigga. Give you real black eyes. Come on, don't uh, do that, uh, nigga. Uh, and that's the truth, nigga. Trust me, nigga. You could uh, trust I've me. I've had nigga. about enough of your shit. Uh oh. That's the truth, nigga. Shut the fuck up while the I'm talking. The loudest niggas are the light skinned niggas. Yep. That wish they could be black. But that'll do that work, though. Yo, I know. Go ahead with your okay, little Okay, let's all I'm not now. drunk, nigga. I know. I don't drink, nigga. I'm very clear-minded. Uh-huh. Which means I'll fuck you okay. up even more because I'm drunk, nigga. Mm -hmm. oh my God. This I hope you understand that it is a very common belief and stereotype. It's not true, of course. And at last... Let's take a look at this phrase, fair countenance. This one is not hard if we take a look at 1 Samuel 16, 12. We can see that the phrase beautiful countenance has the same Hebrew words as fair countenance. It just means beautiful. So it looks like David was also a pretty boy. The term pretty boy is often reserved for uh, men who have pretty faces because they haven't been scarred in a fight. Uh, and it's a common belief that they don't work hard either. <laughs> All right, Muhammad Ali time. 
Muhammad Ali was arguably the greatest boxer ever to most. His pretty looks and fancy footwork made it easy for him to coin the phrase Float like a butterfly and stay like a bee. Oh. He would often boast on his looks and claim that he was pretty because he doesn't get hit. You look at me, I'm loaded with confidence. I can't beat me. I have a hundred eighty amateur fights, twenty two professional fights, and I'm pretty as a girl. I don't get hit. I don't get hit. I'm so pretty. When Pretty Boy was supposed to be an insult, Muhammad Ali turned that around and used it to his advantage and often exaggerated the opponent's bad looks. I saw Sonny Liston a few days ago, Cash. Ain't he ugly? <laughs> he's, he's too ugly to be the world's champ. The world's champ should be pretty like me. My point is to make the connection between Muhammad Ali and King David, okay? Both were pretty boys. Uh, both had ruddy skin, which made their opponents underestimate them at first, but after the dust settled, both were considered one of the greatest warriors of their time. Muhammad Ali was never given the nickname Red because he didn't have a special case of ruddiness. You know, being red all over, where a person's hair and skin have red undertones in it. Malcolm X and Red Fox were red all over. King David and Esau were very similar in appearance and were both red all over, all right? So congratulations, you just finished part three of Red in Hebrew. Um, I might uh, come out with a, uh, a conclusion video just to give my informal opinion about Esau, uh, where he is today, and uh, what he looks like today because uh, there's no way I can cover all of this <laughs> in just this little series right here. I might make another series. But um, thank you once again for joining me, Noble Afro. Uh, I really appreciate it, man. Even if you don't agree, oh my gosh, thank you so much for actually seeking out the matter like a king and watching this whole thing. I have nothing but love for you family and I am incredibly joyful that you all have been awakened by the Most High. All praises. All right, if you got any questions, any comments, comment below. Uh, don't forget to visit All Praises Apparel for your French clothing at a low cost. And uh, for this video, I think I'm gonna let our brother Muhammad Ali close this out, all right? Shalom, I'm Noble Afro. That's what he said. This guy tells me this. Let's I? be friends for one minute just to get him. <laughs> no, no. Hey, come on. No, come on. No, no, no. no. This is my good minute. Let's show him. Oh, what? Show him. Now, what show him. Now, what time is it? It's uh, a little bit of a Oh, no. Give me a taste of something. Give me a taste of something. Give me a taste of Wait, can I say something? Give me a taste of something. I must I'm going to tell you one thing. All the brothers, all of the brothers out there watching television, yeah. I don't care how mad y'all to each other, when it's come to one of these fellas trying to divide us, we must unite. Oh, God. <laughs>